chains underneath our feet. Amen? God wants us to be free. Amen? And when we understand that all of us are growing, all of us are growing. Amen? And God does meet us where we're at. But God wants us to be free. He wants us to know that we have the upper hand. We have leverage. And, man, the words we speak are different than the words of the enemy. We're going to look at words, false words versus words of fire, of God's fire. Words can be devastating and words can be life-giving. Amen? We're going to look at a number of things, okay? So we're going to get right into this. So again, God's fire. God is fire. He consists of fire. And we shared from Psalm 103 and 104 that angels, the Bible says their spirits are made of fire, but our born-again spirits are made of fire. And the image of God, so much above angels, of course. And God is a consuming fire. We shared last week on his word, Jeremiah 23, 29. He says, it's not my word, fire. Amen? Glory to God. Sometimes in the midst of the battle, we get tired, and sometimes we can minimize really who God is. And he is fire. And fire burns up the enemy. And fire releases, glory to God, his life into us. Amen? I tell you, we love the scripture. We quote it so much, and rightly so. I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, amen? But it's Christ who lives within me. That's the gospel, amen? It's Christ that lives within us. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of God, Woo, who loved me and gave himself up for me, amen? Galatians 2.20. I live by the faith of God. We live by the love of God. We live by the strength of God, Amen? through our born-again spirits, by Holy Spirit. Amen? And we cannot accentuate that reality enough. Glory to God. But there is a battle because, you know, false fire can look like real fire. And sometimes false fire can seem more real than real fire, especially if we're not walking through the Word of God like we should. Amen? You know, we, good is really the enemy of best. In these last days, I really firmly believe this, good is not going to be good enough. Because the enemy, he's coming, he's here for real, stronger than ever he is. But God, like a flood, raises a standard. I believe one of the main reasons, he's raising a standard, is causing us to enter in, in humility, love for one another, and in seeing the reality that surely without God we can do nothing. But I tell you what, with God living through us, I tell you, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Glory to God. It's amazing when we're weak, we're strong. And that's, I believe that freedom and that victory, mm, there's nothing like it, okay? So uh, let, let's start here. The Bible says in the book of James, God is the father of spirits. He's the father of our spirit. We're made in his image. God is spirit. Amen. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John 4, 23 and 24. When, we, when mankind sinned, Adam and Eve, they exchanged their spirit for soul life, for the knowledge of good and evil for the ability in their own eyes to determine what's right and what's wrong. And that's where so many people are at, even in the church, in the world. It's my truth. It's what I think is right, what I think is wrong. Can I tell you something? We don't have either the ability or the right to tell anybody what's right or wrong and accept it's through the word of God. Amen? That is in the auspices of God and it's not up to us. Amen? And I tell you, right now, you know, Isaiah 5 says in the last days, evil we've seen is good, and good is evil. Everything's trying, good is trying to be canceled by the enemy. Basic righteousness. And so there's a battle. And you know, the soul, the mind, and the emotions. There's a way that looks right on the man, but its way is death. If it's not according to the word, 
Can I tell you something? I don't care how good it seems. Someone says, well, God loves everybody. You know, God's never going to send anybody to hell. Well, you know what? You send yourself to hell by, by not accepting Jesus. But there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Yes, some of this stuff sounds to the natural mind okay. To the soul, it, 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 you know, an emotional deal. But I'm here to say this. It's false fire. When somebody can enter in to nullifying the word of God on the basis of what's trending on TikTok, what's trending politically, what's trending wherever, when it's contrary to the word of God. There's a, again, there's a way that seems right unto man, and it's a way is death. So we have to understand, man, sometimes, have you ever been, you don't feel God. Have you ever been there? Man, you haven't been far if you haven't, right? Man, some of the greatest manifestations that I've seen in healing or salvation, salvation first, of course, is when, you know, I, I, God told me to share the gospel with somebody. I'll be honest with you. Man, I don't feel anything. Man, the only thing I feel is bad. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, isn't that the truth? And it's like you'd think if someone's going to get saved, you'd have an inkling, right? That it's going to be a good day. And sometimes, honestly, you know, you share the gospel, and it's like, man, you don't feel nothing. But guess what? Jesus comes. Amen? Hallelujah. We walk by our spirit. Yeah. Walk in the spirit. Glory to God, and you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. But I tell you, false fire. Man, sometimes your emotions are up here. It seems so good when it's wrong. And the emotions aren't there when it is good. You can't trust emotions outside the word of God. Emotions are good. But I'll tell you what, it is the caboose and not the engine. Amen? If you're making your soul the engine, you're going to be in trouble, especially in these last days. Because the... The powers of the air are stronger and they will take you from one place to another. They will take you from one place to another. I'll tell you what, but we walk by our spirit. Amen. Amen. Our minds are amazing. How many of God did a good job with dirt? Amen. Seriously. <laughs> Your mind, isn't it? It's made from dirt. Seriously. He did an amazing job with dirt. But I'll tell you what, your spirit has been imparted to you. It's the literal image of the living God. Different times when my mind has given me problems. You know what I'm saying? How come this? How come not this? You know, type of things. I just have to say, you know what? Here's the deal. I've got a choice to believe the dirt that's speaking or this, my spirit where Holy Spirit resides. I'm going to choose to walk in the Spirit. Amen? But sometimes it's easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? That The enemy comes up with some things, and it's like, well, why did this happen? Why didn't this happen? How come this person's prospering, and man, they're not living right, and you're living right, and you're not type of thing? And that's what Psalms are about a lot. You know, David shares this. you got to say, just shut up. Amen? Do not get into a debate with the devil. Do not debate the devil. Just tell them to shut up, it is written. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. You give, the, you give your soul an inch, it can take a mile. Amen? It'll complicate things, confuse things. So again, we've got the fire of God within our spirit, through Holy Spirit. And then we've got, again, false fire, which comes through the natural mind, which comes through our emotions. All right. The power of Holy Spirit, the power of the devil. Yeah, the devil has some power, but he's just a fallen angel. You know, let's look at Exodus 7. We've shared this different times, but, and we know this, but let's look at it. In Exodus 7, you know, this is in the context of Pharaoh. And, you know, God tells, verse 10, and Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, Exodus 7, 10, and and they did as the Lord had commanded and cast down uh, his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. That's pretty strong, isn't it? I said this before. If I, if I cast down my pen and it becomes a kitty cat, are you impressed? 
You know what I'm saying? For real. I mean, are you? I would be. You know what I'm saying? Wow, come to church. You know, pastor makes kitty cats out of pens, right? You know what I'm saying? Seriously, you know what I'm saying? Forget signs. Yeah, anyway, we won't go there, right? Yeah, amen. But it is impressive. But look what happened. Then Pharaoh also called his so-called wise men, the sorcerers, the magicians of Egypt, and they did the same thing. They cast down every man his rod. They became serpents. So in the natural, it looked like the enemy had leverage. There's a hundred serpents, and the reason he cast out and became a serpent is because they were destroying, the serpent was like the emblem of Egypt. And so now there's a hundred serpents, at least, from the enemy. There's one serpent, a good serpent from God, right? It looked like then. They're going to lose, right? But the serpent that came from Almighty God, the Bible says, swallowed up their rods. Glory to God. Sometimes it looks like the enemy has leverage, but he does not. The omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God is the real fire. Amen? Amen? And I, I use this in the context of cancer. Yeah, there's cells that can go wrong and start to multiply. And it looks like, man, the good cells are going to be overtaken by the bad cells. But we say, you know what? Cells of God, through the fire of Jesus, take over the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But again, in the natural, sometimes it's easier said than done. Because... Again, the Bible of the natural man are the five senses. What I see, you know, what I hear, taste, touch, and smell. We cannot afford to enter into the natural. Amen? It's false fire. It really is false fire. Amen. You know, it's continued to look, I mean, angels and demons. We talk about demons and spiritual warfare, and rightly so. Ephesians 6 communicates that. At the same time, angels outnumber demons, you know, two to one. Angels are more powerful than demons. How do you know that demons can influence people? But angels can influence people. We need to understand that there are angels of influence. Angels are greater than demons. Glory to God. Again, fire of God. Fire within a false fire. A big one is truth worth truth versus lies. Man, the enemy can be convincing. His devil means deceiver. And you know, you look in Ephesians 4, verse 22. It says, put off concerning the former uh, life, the old man, which is corrupt according to the lust of deceit. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind or the mind of your spirit. And put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So he's speaking this to the church. So it says that the old man works through the lust of deceit. Lust, pressure, sin. It always, the root is always there's a deception. There's always a deception that leads unto lust. Pressure, which is pressure, which leads to sin, according to the book of James and these scriptures, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Take something very simple. You know, uh, man, maybe you're sharing the gospel, and it just seems like it's not working. It seems like people don't want Jesus. But guess what? Jesus said they do. Jesus says the fields are ripe on the harvest. Amen. We cannot let our experiences define a lie. So, man, so you go a month, you go two months, it doesn't seem, man, everybody you talk to, no, I don't want to hear that. But you know what? It's a lie. People do want Jesus. I said people do want Jesus. Amen? And glory to God. See, here's the deal. See, we're talking about freedom through the fire of God. 
If you, don't, if you think people don't want Jesus, you're going to share with them with your head down. Well, they're, they don't want Jesus anyways. So why are you saying, oh, because I have to share? No, people want Jesus. Act like they want Jesus. When they say they don't want Jesus, you say, don't be foolish. Sure you want Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> really, do you want to go to hell? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to have the devil wreck you here and wreck you here? Amen? It's whether you're believing a lie that people don't want Jesus, or you're believing the truth that the fields are rot on the harvest. Amen? Amen. Truth versus a lie. Man, it, it is so important, amen, to go with the truth. And sometimes, outward appearances, man, it seems like this is not working. Sometimes you're praying and then things get worse if you've ever been there in the natural. But even when they're getting worse, you know they're getting better in your heart. And the enemy's bowing his knee to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. God wants us to know. I've shared this before. I was counseling a young man. He is going, went, going through a lot emotionally and even suicidal. And I mean, the enemy lied to him and said he had no purpose, you know, no good, and on and on and on. And uh, Jesus really changed his life. We met together for counseling, and it was a good deal. Really nice young man. And uh, I just said, you know, if you had a, a chance to make a, a Christian T-shirt, I like bumper stickers, Christian T-shirts and stuff. I think they can give a message, you know what I'm saying? And... Uh, we have a bumper sticker in the back of our car. I didn't put it there. Kathy did. It says, uh, it says the bumper sticks, that, you know, someone comes real close to your car and it says, are you following Jesus this closely? You know what I'm saying? But, uh, amen. But, uh, so I said, if you could make a T-shirt, what would you put on it? And he said, man, I would put this on it. I now believe the one who died for me, not the one who lied to me. Amen? Isn't that the truth? I, believe, I now believe the one who died for me, not the one who lied to me. Glory to God. But outward appearances, they're real. Proverbs 6 says, Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? And it goes to the next verse, brings the context. Can he commit adultery with his neighbor's wife? Mm, and not be destroyed. Wow, it's quiet when you share that verse, huh? Amen. Wonder why God put that there, huh? It's because people think that they're invincible. They can do wrong and not be burnt. That's not a game. Amen? So we, we need to enter into a place of not buying the lie. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's kingdom is an upside-down kingdom. Man, you want to be seen in public? Don't be seen. You want to be blessed financially? Give. You want to get through to somebody? Man, even when they've treated you wrong, you love them. You enter into a place where God's an upside-down kingdom. Amen? You forgive and forget. Right? Wow, the enemy. Nah. See, that's real fire. The enemy says, you know what? You don't forgive, you never forget. You get revenge. Wow. A couple years ago, the number one TV show on television was called Revenge. Because so many people entered into it. Because in the natural, you're in the natural, you want revenge. Don't you? Somehow it gives you closure. But I tell you what, that's false fire. But why did millions of people watch it? Because to them... See, it resonated. All right. Let's keep going down. Okay, there, there's a number of things. We're not going to get into everything. But uh, again, outward appearances. Man, we've got to understand that many times it's just false fire of the enemy. You know, when they went in, the 12 spies, and there were giants in the land. And the first thing the devil said, God's brought you here to bring harm to you. Huh. The devil said this. God's brought you here to bring harm to you. But Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit in them. They said, no, 
God didn't bring us in the land to have us be harmed. He brought us in the land to destroy the giants so we can enter in the giving God territory. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. False fire, real fire, fire of God. The fire of his love is real. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13. Let's, let's just look at that real quick. Someone says, I know that. Well, it's, we all know it. But it's how much do we practice it fully, right? Man, first thing love does is suffers long. Ooh, man, that hurts, doesn't it, in the natural? Seriously. It's patient, right, with others. Wow. Not a doormat, but it's patient. You're, it's kind. Envy's not. Puffs itself up not. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeks not its own. Boy, that's a big thing. It esteems one another higher than themselves. Glory to God. Easily, not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Mm. Rejoices not in iniquity. Rejoices in the truth. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Never fails. Amen. Glory to God. We walk, amen, in the reality. Glory to God. That, man, God's word is true. And it's the key. It's the key. There's so much here. Uh, man, the Bible says when you lose, you gain. That's real fire. That's character. You, in the, in the natural, losing that which is of the, of, the, of the flesh. Someone says when you get saved, you might lose some friends. Well, God will give you more. So you might lose this. Well, God will give you real life. Amen. Man, the world, man, it's not a good deal. Man, sexual sin is rampant. What's, what's sexual sin? It's false fire. And sex and marriage is awesome, but I'll tell you what, it's false fire. It'll destroy you, man. It's false fire. It looks real. It looks real. Drugs, false fire. It's false fire, man. So many kids struggling with drugs right now. Why? Because it does give them something, doesn't it? Gives them a high. Yeah, it'll bring them down. It'll eventually kill them. But you know what? It does give them high. Everything's accentuated, magnified. The colors are, yeah, I get it. It's false fire. We need to be so confident in the spirit of life that when we share with people, we've got the upper hand. Amen. I tell you what, someone has, they're multimillionaires. I'm all for going to people, the homeless, the poor, absolutely. But sometimes we're intimidated by those who are seemingly prosperous in our society. Well, they're the professor, they're this, they're that. Can I tell you something? I don't give a flip what they are. For real. I don't care how much money they have, how much power they seem to have, how much prestige, they don't, they don't have anything other than Jesus. Don't be intimidated by false fire that people put their identity in. False fire, man, I'll tell you what, it's vain, and most of these people, man, are a mess, the truth be told. Amen, all right. Well, religion's false fire, isn't it? Looks so sanctimonious, so righteous, so this, and you're in you, your whitewashed tombs, Jesus said, right? Wow. It's, it's a false fire. How many people are going to be in hell because of the false fire of religion? Amen. Jesus is so different than religion. Amen. Glory to God. I'm thinking in hell you're going to be alone. But I see if you weren't alone, I tell people, I'll be honest with you, I said, hell's going to have a great, a great choir if, you, if they're not alone. So many religious people, man. Is choir wrong? No. But man, when you have a form of godliness and deny the power, and you substitute religiosity for intimacy, amen, it's false, amen. All right, okay. There's a lot we're going to enter into. Okay, that's all for free. Okay, let's go, to, let's go to Daniel 3. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to Daniel 3. And let's look at 
Paul's fire versus real fire. Daniel, Meshach, uh, and the three Hebrew children, Bendigo, I mean, they're, they're doing well. You know, I mean, Daniel's got appointed a high position. And then uh, those with him are given authority. And, uh, and people get jealous and come up with a scheme to get the king to come up with his image to everybody's the worship, right? So it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, verse 2, Daniel 3, 2. He said to gather together the, every, the princes, the governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, chairs, rulers, of all, every province that come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Everybody came, right? And they worshiped the image. I mean, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. The devil has an image. The world has an image it wants you to conform to. It might not be some statue, but it's an image where the, there's no right or wrong, an image, no absolutes. It's an image where you're your own God. So all these people are doing this. Everybody's falling down and worshiping it. Hmm. Can I tell you something? In today's society, even America, you're not in the majority like you used to be. I tell you, the 12 spies were not. 10 of them are wrong, okay? Majority doesn't mean reality, truth, okay? So then, everybody's doing this. And then word gets back, verse 12. And these people that are jealous of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and of Daniel, they say, hey, there's certain Jews who now set over your affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve, they serve not thy gods, nor worship your golden image which thou hast set up. And Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they were brought be, uh, before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar, it said, is it true that you do not worship the golden image which I have set up? Mm. And he says, I'm going to give you one more chance. Man, I'm going to play all the music, the flutes, the cornet, the harp, everything. And you can save your life. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So now you have a false fire of the enemy. But it's real. I'm not saying demons aren't real. It's false in the sense that it's a counterfeit of God. Or it's something that's contrary to God that makes it look like it has leverage over God. That's false fire, right? <coughs> wow. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. Here, God, you got to answer the devil. You got to answer the devil. Here's what they said. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you in this manner. They're saying, we don't have to think about it. You know the best way to win the fight and when, is when you already have an answer prior to the fight rather than trying to get an answer in the midst of the battle. Amen. You get in the word before you start your day. You, you're continually in the word so you have an answer. You know how you're going to respond when fear or lies or whatever try to come against you. Amen. Whew, glory to God. They said, we don't have to think about it. We've already made a decision. Decisions determine destiny. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, he's able to deliver us. They're saying, basically, he will deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace. It says, he will deliver us out of your hand. But even if he wouldn't, we still would not serve your gods. Amen. 
Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. You know, you can upset people when you don't bow to their image. Amen? Really? You will upset. They're, they're talking their dirty jokes or whatever. On the, man, when I taught high school, I'll be honest with you, the faculty room was not a good deal. And man, these, bad, these just filthy jokes going around. And I, not every time. I just, you know, eat my lunch. But different. one time I just stood up and said, hey, come on. Not here. Not now. And it helped. Some people did not like me. One guy especially. Man, for real. It's like, you know what? For real. The deal is this. Here's what happened. He was full of fury. The form of his visage was changed against them. See, when he was doing what they, they wanted him to do, when everything was good, but when they said no, mm, he commanded that he should heat the furnace seven times more than it would be heated. Now, honestly, that's stupidity. The fire was hundreds of degrees hot, enough to kill them ten times over, right? Why would you have to heat it up seven times more? See, the devil tries to overplay. He overplays his hand. He tries to intimidate as if making it hotter would change their mind. It's like they weren't going to die anyways, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, now when it's, uh, it's 500 degrees hot, okay, okay now it's going to be 5,000 degrees hot. That'll change your mind, right? <laughs> Seriously. And, and honestly, and look what happens. He commanded the most mighty men that he had to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to cast them into the fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats, their garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew all his mighty men. Isn't that interesting? Verse 22. You want to defeat the devil? Be obedient to God. Through their obedience, the mighty men of Nebuchadnezzar that plotted against them were destroyed because the fire went out and consumed them. Many times the devil overplays his hand. Mm. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. But Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Did I tell you something? You want to be loosed fully? Learn to walk in the midst of fire, knowing you won't get burnt, because in the midst of battle is where Jesus is with you most. For real. For real. For real. The fourth man. The fire of the enemy, as powerful it was, was. Because Jesus was there. When Jesus was in the midst of the fire, False fire doesn't touch Jesus. And see, because you're with him, because he's in you, it will not touch you. We don't run from the fire. We go through the fire. The scripture says in Isaiah, we walk through the fire and we do not get burnt. Amen? Amen? No, we're not foolish. We don't throw ourselves in the fire when God doesn't speak to us to go through it. Amen? It's the truth. That's what John 5, 19 is about, right? We only do what we see the Father do. But this is so powerful. 
man, I had uh, got new Bible cover. It's one of my favorite verses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I shared this verse. I, I shared, I showed some in my Bible study. There is, uh, and this young man says, yeah, I love that verse too. He had a tattooed on his arm. <laughs> Joshua one night. I said, well, guys, that's what's different about us. It's not because we have some corner on the market because of some gifting we have because of this or that. It's because we're a child of God and Jesus is in us through Holy Spirit and he's with us. Amen? I tell you, that's so powerful. But they were loosed. They were more free in the fire than they were Ooh, well, not in it. Peter was more free on the water, even when he sunk for a little bit. He really didn't sink. He started to go down. He was more free than those who stayed in the boat. See, they thought they were free. They had a false sense of security. Peter was most free. You know why? Because that's where Jesus was. We all go through things, all of us. That's why we need to encourage one another. But I'm here to say this. You're never going to get free, and I'm never going to be free unless I understand that this gospel is so powerful that I can walk through the fire, and you can walk through the fire and not get burned. And you know what you can do also? When somebody is in the midst of the fire and maybe they're a young Christian or they're an older Christian that love God, they're just struggling. And just saying, man, he's getting burned up. You know, I ain't going in there. You go in the fire where they're at and you be a rescuer. Amen. Not in condem- condemnation like you're better than them. But you take them out and you rejoice together. Amen. Instead of saying, I wonder what they did wrong to be in the fire. Yeah, I didn't think they had enough faith. Yeah, I knew they were struggling with that. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I never thought that they'd, they'd make it. Really? <sighs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Our gospel is supernatural. I'm going to say something strong. If you and I don't learn to walk in the supernatural through the word of God, it's not going to work in these last days. Because you know what? The devil's got some supernatural things working. He's got demons that speak for real, that deceive people. He might even be able to turn some rods into serpents. But it's a joke to our God. But it's only going to be when we understand that God has given us wind at the back, our back. The supernatural is our bread. I believe in the last days, God's going to raise up churches throughout the world where the supernatural is normal. In a bigger, 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 bigger way. A bigger way. I really believe that. That's the spirit of Elijah. That's the spirit of the gospel. All right. Okay, you guys are doing a lot of good shouting on this one. Let's get to something. Let's get a few vegetables in right here. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Mashed potatoes, gravy with some good steak. All right. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 3. Amen. We're talking about false fire versus real fire. John Bevere has some really good teaching on this and how the enemy will use fellow believers, false fire. Regarding words. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. If you can't bless somebody, keep your mouth shut. Amen. Do three things. Keep your mouth shut. Pray for them and look at yourself. Come on. Amen. Come on. God is Trinity, right? I just gave you three things. Keep your mouth shut. 
Amen. Pray for that person and look at yourself. But I'm speaking to me as well. Believe me, I am. Amen. James 3. Wow. All right. My brethren, uh, I'm talking about the tongue. Whew. Glory to God. Mm. It says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths. In the mouths, you do that, right, with the horses? That they may obey us. Amen. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whensoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts us great things. Behold, how great a matter of fire it kindles. Ooh. And the tongue is fire. Now listen to this. Now he's rebuking people because they're using their tongue falsely. Your tongue can be real fire that destroys condemnation in somebody and releases the fire of deliverance and encouragement and blessing or it can be a fire of destruction. I firmly believe that it's up to us and what we mm, perceive and enter into. So the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. Oh my. That can defile the whole body. Set us on fire the course of nature and it's set on fire of hell. Wow. Man. It says every kind of beast, birds, serpents, and the sea is tamed and been tamed by mankind. But the, the tongue, talking about the natural man, the tongue can no man tame. Wow. It is unruly evil full of deadly poison. Now that's false fire, right? That's a natural man. We need to understand that we're not into natural, we're supernatural, right? The more we mature in Jesus, right, the more our tongue is under control. Listen to this verse. Pastor, is time almost up? No, it's not. <laughs> Verse 9, Therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and therefore curse we men, which are made after the similar, similitude of God, the image of God. Wow. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brother, these things are not to be. There's a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. Can a fig tree... Uh, Bring forth uh, olive berries, either vine, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. Who is the wise man and endue with knowledge among you? Let him show but with works of meekness. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. And it talks about the wisdom from, from above is earthly, or er, er, from uh, below is earthly, sensual, devilish, Envy, strife, confusion. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy. Wow, there you go. Good fruits without partiality, that hop, hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. I tell you, when we enter in to these scriptures, it's very sobering, it, it's real. I mean, it really, I mean, it's, it's real. So we see a reality. You have the ability within you to bless someone or curse someone. This is a true story. It doesn't always happen this way because God's merciful. But there's a guy that my dad worked with. He worked in a steel company. And the guy was a good guy, but he, he got in a, an argument with his son. And his son said, you know, and again, sometimes you say things you don't mean. I get it, we're not perfect, but I'm talking about we really need to be careful with this. And his uh, dad was on the steps and he was on the bottom of the steps. He just said, man, I hate you. You're no good. You're this, you're that. Now, I get it. Sometimes a teenager might say some things like that. You know what I'm saying? Someone said, God has given us teenagers so we know how God feels when uh, what he's created, you know, doesn't respond well. 
Amen. <laughs> I think there's some truth to that, right? But this guy was an older guy. And just said, I hate you. I wish you were dead. And it's a true story. He was dead at a heart attack. Died. I mean, was, I don't know. We really have to be careful with words. I tell you what, you have the ability to bless and curse, to maim and destroy, or to bring blessing. Really. So many people have been labeled wrongly by words. <sighs> too thin, too fat, not smart, not this, that, on and on and on. But you know what? John Bevere is sharing his good teacher. But man, in the church, you know, whatever's in the world will try to come in the church. Amen. You need to bless one another wholeheartedly. Esteem one another higher than yourself. And you'll be blessed. Amen. We need to enter into a place where we understand the difference between false fire regarding our words and how real that is and the fire of our words. Death and laughter are in the power of the tongue, right? Proverbs 18. Glory to God. But the power of our words, they're, they're powerful. They penetrate, especially when you're speaking the word of God. Kim Clement, the great prophet, he's gone to be with the Lord. I, I never forget his testimony. He said, man, he was so arrogant. He was in London. He was in, uh, you know, for a piano type of thing at some major uh, university. And someone shared the gospel with him. And he just spit in their face. He started quoting all these philosophers, Voltaire and Rousseau, all these, all these people, right? And the guy prophesied, not out of revenge. He said, sir, with all due respect, I see you in the same spot. It was a street in London. A year from today, you're dying in your own blood. You got stabbed. And he said, you can either call on Jesus under deliverance or you can call on your philosophers and die. It's a true story. And Kim said, he got stabbed. He wasn't thinking about that word. And he was dying, just like that word said. But the guy didn't want the word to come to pass. He wasn't cursing him. He's saying, if you don't, he said, there's something about you, the enemy. You can't do this. And man, and Kim said, you know, the only thing that came to me was that word that man spoke. And I said, Jesus, help me. He entered into destiny. The words you speak penetrate more than you know for good. I love the test of D. James Kennedy, a Presbyterian pastor, Coral Ridge in Florida. He's going to be with the Lord. But uh, a guy came in, a professor, very arrogant, into his office and said, I, I don't believe that there's a hell. And I uh, just started to condemn this pastor. And uh, DJ Timothy just called the word in love. He said, it's a point out the man wants to die and then the judgment. And the guy went on a rant for like a half hour and D. James Kennedy. It's a point out the man wants to die and then the judgment. This went on for like three hours. And he quoted that verse like five times. At the end, at like the three hours, the guy just broke, got down on his knees and accepted Jesus. He said, you know what? It is a point out the man wants to die. And I don't want to enter into the judgment. No manipulation. Just the pure word of God. Amen. Because it's fire. And it burnt up the deception that was destroying that man. Amen. Whew, glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17 real quick, okay? Look at the power of words. David and Goliath. We know the story. But let's look at something that's very interesting here. Goliath was confronting the whole Israeli army. Mm. And his words immobilized, paralyzed the whole Israeli army. First of all, don't let the devil make you fight on his terms. They had a much stronger army than the Philistines. So he's saying this one man against one man. That was stupid. They should have just said, no, we're not doing that. 
the army against army and just destroyed the Philistines. Instead, they got up every day in battle array. They did their spiritual shouts, hallelujah, this, this, and that. And they cowardly, in fear, did not go to the battle. Okay? That'll preach. So David comes along. He had killed the lion and the bear. Mm. He was confident. Long story short, because of time, let's, let's go to this. Verse 40, he took his staff in his hand, chosen five smooth stones out of the brook. I believe that represents fivefold ministry. And also David had what? He had uh, four other brothers, right? Put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had given in a script. And his sling was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came out and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. There's a lot of people disdain you and me. Because they think they have leverage. They don't. For he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, he spoke words. And my dog, that thou should come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. His God was Dagon. That was the major principality he swore by. He cursed him by Dagon. If you remember in 1 Samuel 5, Dagon was the demon that bowed to the Holy Ghost. Amen? But he still has allegiance and is empowered by this demon. He cursed David by his gods. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Mm. What's he doing? He's speaking. And he's wanting the demon to confirm what he speaks. He's got counterfeit fire. It's just like the order of God. We speak, Holy Ghost confirms. He's speaking so the demon can confirm him. <clears throat> then said David, you've got to answer back. To the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Sehabath, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee. I will take your head from you. I will give your carcass of the host. He said the whole Philistine army is going to be destroyed. This day under the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. Amen? Isn't that good to say? Isn't that good to speak? It's not because I fasted 10 days. It's not because I had 10 days where I led people to Jesus. It's not because I'm older in the Lord. It's because God is going to come through for me and fight my battle. He might fight it through me. He might fight it for me. He might use angels. But it's God that's going to bring forth the victory. And you see, this is what God confirmed. Glory to Jesus. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you in to our hands. Notice he didn't say my hands. Like it's my deal. He said our hands. Amen. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, came and drew nigh to meet David. David ran to the, mm, to the, our, the, the meet the Philistine. He ran to the battle. Put his hand in the bag. Took thence a stone. Slung it. And smote the Philistine in the forehead. Isn't it interesting? He had all this armor on. But his forehead was exposed. There's always a way to see the enemy is exposed. And the stone sunk into his forehead, fell upon his face to the earth. David prevailed against the Philistine with a sling, a stone, smote the Philistine, slew him. But there's no, now get this, but there's no sword in the hand of David. But guess what? His armor bearer had a sword. But David ran, stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword. Evidently, the armor bearer took off. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. He drew it out of the sheath, and he cut off his head. And their champion was dead, and they fled. And then, the, then the men of Israel, of Judah, rose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. Isn't it interesting? 
that those who are cowardly, amen, those who say God doesn't heal, amen, they get on board when somebody walks that was crippled, amen, come on. Those in the church, well, God doesn't do that today, and then you help them, glory to God. Now they're on board and they're pursuing, but that's okay, amen? It's all right. Glory to God, as long as they stay on board, right? But I'll tell you what, I'm going to be, who I'm going to be in covenant with. I'm going to be in covenant with people that don't get on board after the fact, but get on board with me when I'm facing the giant that they say cannot be destroyed. Those are people you want to be in covenant with. Not those who tell you what to do, but won't get in the battle with you. Not those who come after the fact, right? Mm, come on. Glory to Jesus. They destroyed the Philistines. God is calling us all to maturity. We're all in the process of growth. All of us. And we always will be. But what God wants us to understand. The false fire is getting more real. It looks like real fire. But we need to enter into Jesus. That Jesus is so real to us. That the false fire, even though the furnace is heated seven times hotter, it's nothing compared to our God. As long as he reigns and fights the battles, we're going to win. I want to encourage you today. The fourth man is in you through Holy Spirit. The fourth man is with us today. He will use us. He'll fight for us. As long as he is with us. We can rejoice. We don't have to fear. We enter in a place. We go from victory to victory. Because God does not know how to lose. Amen. So I, I just really want to encourage you. I, I, I tell you what. We all have challenges. We all face battles. And sometimes joy doesn't come to the morning. But I tell you what, Jesus is worthy of our faithfulness. You know, the body of Christ is worthy of your esteem, of my esteem. We don't have to enter into false fire to meet our needs, to be accepted. The fire of the living God. I tell you, there's nothing like it. Amen? Holla, it just makes me want to worship him. Just makes me want to worship him and let the body of Christ know first that our God is for us. He's not condemning us. And he will. I tell you what, we will take the, the giant's head we really will. And what we'll say through Jesus. Mm. Through Jesus, we can do all things. Team with me if you would.